First thing I'm going to do uh, is I want to release the prophetic word that the Lord gave me, and then we'll do uh, the scripture reference. And then if you have any prayer requests, whatever, just put them on the screen, and I'll be happy to pray for them. But uh, <clears throat> I want to release the prophetic word that the Lord gave me for today. And here it is. For behold, my people, you are coming into a season of Isaac. You are coming into a season where you will give birth to the baby that was promised you, a baby that you've been carrying for years, and you shall have it out here and hold it in your hand, and your faith will finally become sight. And as your heart has been sick from deferred hope, so now that the desire comes, it will be unto you a tree of life. So I release unto you, my people, a spirit of fulfillment. I release unto you, my people, a spirit of wisdom and grace and strength to give birth to the baby no matter where you are in life. I release unto you a spirit of completion where you can finish your course and finish fighting your good fight to give birth to the baby. And when you have that baby, that car, that house, that going back to school, that financial breakthrough, building a business, a relationship, you're going to name it laughter. <coughs> And you're going to laugh many laughs and cry many tears. And when you are laughing and crying over your Isaac, other people are going to see your laugh and your tears. And they're going to walk up to you and ask you, how did you get Isaac? And in those moments, open your mouth. Open your mouth. Open your mouth. And give me, give me, give me all the glory. Yes, sir, says the spirit of the living God. Amen, amen, amen. So that's the word that the Lord gave me to release that, uh, release that we're in the spirit of Isaac, uh, the season of Isaac, where we're going to get those babies. We're going to get that stuff we've been uh, believing for. We're going to get that stuff that God promised us. And sometimes we've been carrying that baby for years. Sometimes we've been carrying that hope for years. Sometimes we've been uh, uh, waiting for years to give birth to that thing that God promised us so long ago. God says we're in that season now. We're in that season of Isaac. So today on Mother's Day, I want to look uh, quickly at a verse about Sarah, one of the mothers in the Bible, as it relates to that prophetic word I just gave about Isaac. Okay? Uh, let's look at 1 Peter 3. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 6. Coming out of the King James, that verse says, Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. Out of the Berean Study Bible, that says, Just as Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him Lord, you are her children if you do what is right and refuse to quiver in fear. NIV says, Um... Like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord, you are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. What does that mean? Okay, for those of you that don't know, uh, God promised Abraham and Sarah when he first met them. When he first met them, they were still called Abram and Sarai. God breathed on them and added the Hebrew breath mark, the, the breath mark, and changed their name to Abraham and Sarah. That's why God changed their names, means that God breathed on them, and Abraham became the father of many nations, and Sarah, uh, that name uh, means princess. And God told them they were going to have a body out of their own loins, out of their own body, okay? Well, Abraham was 75 when God first made that promise to him, and Sarah was 65. Okay, the promise didn't come to pass until 25 years later, when Abraham was 100, Okay? And so Sarah had gone through menopause, and Sarah told her husband, uh, it's over for me, uh, you know, I'm not menstruating anymore, I'm not ovulating, so I'm not going to do it. So Sarah suggested that Abraham sleep with her handmaid, Hagar, and they have a baby, and he did, and they did, and that, that child, that boy was named Ishmael. And Abraham went to God about Ishmael, and God said, I'll bless Ishmael because he's your son, but in Isaac shall they, thy seed be called. So in other words, God told Abraham and Sarah, my plan hasn't changed, okay? And just because you're older and just because Sarah went through menopause and just because whatever, whatever, I still told you the two of you are going to have a baby. 
And if God says that you and your wife are going to have a baby, then it doesn't matter how old you are. If God said that's what's going to happen, then that's what's going to happen. And so when it says that you are her children, meaning Sarah's daughter, Sarah's children, if you do what is right and refuse to quiver in fear, what that means is that when Sarah went through menopause, she got a little shook. You know, that's kind of the, the phrase, the word we use today, you know, you know, I got shook. Sarah got a little shook. Sarah said, I'm, I'm old, I'm past the manner of women, I've stopped menstruating, I, I, I don't see how this is going to happen. And it couldn't have happened in the natural. So Sarah got a little afraid and said, well, I still want to have kids, but my handmaid is still young enough to have kids naturally, so maybe I'll just let her get with my husband. But God told both, both Abraham and Sarah that that is not what I said. I said, you and your wife going to have a baby. See, so it, even if you are up in age, God proved that he's the God of fertility, that life comes from him. And even if you are up in age, if God says that you are physically going to have a baby, then I don't care if you are 172, if God said you're going to have a baby, you're going to have a baby. And so the Bible here means that Sarah had to learn not to let her circumstances shake her faith. That's what that means. That, that if you do what is right and refuse to quiver in fear, uh, do not give way to fear. Okay? Uh, do, uh, English Standard Version, if you do good and do not fear anything, that is frightening. So in other words, when the devil comes at you and tells you it's too late to have your Isaac, because doesn't, doesn't the devil love to tell us that? Doesn't the devil love to say it's too late for you in life? Whatever it is you've been dreaming about, the devil's like, well, you should have did it here. Well, you should have did it there. Well, it's not going to happen for you now because it's too late. You missed your window, blah, 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 blah. Okay? If God has promised you something, it's going to come to pass if you're 119 years old when it does. Okay, so the Bible is saying that if you want to be a daughter of Sarah, if you want to become a princess, if you want to get your place in history, if you want to give birth to an Isaac, a dream, a promised baby, a late in life baby, a miracle baby, if you want to be like that, you have to learn the lesson that Sarah learned, which is you cannot let your circumstances make you quiver in fear. You cannot let what the devil throws at you make you afraid. So that's the message on this Mother's Day, that for all of you that are actual mothers and all of you that are prospective mothers and all of you that are spiritual mothers, because all women are not going to be natural mothers in their life, but some women are going to be spiritual mothers. You're going to mentor. You're going to build businesses. You're going to adopt children. You might take care of your nieces and nephews. You might uh, meet, you know, work in the children's ministry at church. You might work with an orphanage. You might work at a, a, a battered women's shelter. I mean, there's any number of ways you can take uh, your mothering and share with other people. It doesn't always have to be through natural birth. But God is telling you that if he made you a promise, if you've been carrying an Isaac, if God made you a promise 25 years ago, and it looks like uh, it hasn't happened or it's not going to happen, or maybe it's too late to happen. God is telling us through the scripture that Sarah had to learn not to be afraid because of her circumstances. She had to learn that if God said, this baby is coming out of my loins, out of my womb, even though I'm no longer ovulating, even though it, it ceased to be with me, as the Bible said, with the manner of women, that means she went through menopause. If that has happened and God has promised you something, it's still going to come to pass and you can't let your circumstances let you get shook. So I want to encourage those of you, those of you that are biological mothers, those of you that are stepmothers, adoptive mothers, those of you that are spiritual mothers, and those of you that are mothers in other ways, you're going to birth other things in your lifetime. To not be afraid. Don't let your circumstances shake you. If God made you a promise, God said, I'm going to do this in your life, I'm going to do this through you, then don't be afraid of the devil's face. For the Lord your God is with you always, and God is going to bring it to pass because his word cannot be broken. All right. So if there's any prayer requests, uh, put them on the screen. I'm not going to keep you long today. 
because I know everybody wants to get back and spend time with their mom. And uh, I definitely want you to do that. We definitely want to honor and recognize and appreciate our mothers because I tell you what, you sure going to miss her when she's gone. I tell you what. And also, on that note, let me throw in a word of reconciliation. If you are out of fellowship with your mom or your mom or your dad, but if you're out of fellowship with your parents, I strongly encourage you to reconcile that relationship. I know things might have been hard. I know you might have had a rough childhood. I know they might have done inexcusable things. But I, but I exhort you and I encourage you to look up. Don't look at them. Look up at God and realize that your God is bigger than what they did to you. I know that's hard to hear when you are in pain because I have been there. I know how hard that is to hear, but I stop by to tell you as a living witness, if you take your eyes off of what happened or what was done to you and put your eyes on your Savior, on your Father God, you will discover He is bigger than your pain. He is bigger than your circumstances. He's bigger than what happened to you. And He can bring healing and reconciliation and forgiveness and restoreness where there was none before. And if it is beyond the power of man, it is not beyond the power of God. You might have hit a point in your life where your love for someone was spent. You were done. You were out. I'm done with this person. I don't have no more left in my tank to give you. If that's the case, man's extremity is God's opportunity and help is on the way. That means that the Lord can give you, the Lord can do more for you than you could do for yourself. Okay, so for those of you that are estranged from your mother or those of you mothers that are estranged from your children, I want to encourage you to make those relationships right while you still have a chance. Make those relationships right while everybody's still living. Make those relationships right while they're still here. Okay, you will never regret it. You will regret letting your mother, your parent or your child slip on into eternity and you never got right with them, you will regret that for the rest of your life. But you won't regret humbling yourself and going before God and asking God for a spirit of reconciliation and forgiveness and healing, even if you've had an ugly, tumultuous, uh, uh, ridiculous relationship. God can heal even in the worst of circumstances. Okay? All right, so God bless you. I'm going to pray a closing prayer. And I want everybody to go out and enjoy your Mother's Day, however that is for you. Uh, I want you to enjoy it and thank God for it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you just thanking you for a wonderful day, thanking you for uh, our lovely weather, thanking you for life and breath and food and health and so many things, so many blessings you load us with every day, oh God. We thank you for mothers. We thank you for mothering. We thank you for all kinds of mothers, spiritual, biological, adoptive, Oh, God, uh, women that were visionaries that give birth to things that were ahead of their time. So we just ask you to, we want to give you thanks and praise and ask you to give us a spirit of gratitude, forgiveness, reconciliation, and healing, and, and gratefulness so that we can enjoy our mother or her memory or our spiritual mother or whatever we have because it's a gift from you. And we want to honor every gift you gave us. And we ask you to bless the rest of our day. And we offer it up to you, all of our meals, all of our conversation, and all of our time that you might be in the midst and get the glory in all things. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, amen and amen. That's it for today, this Mother's Day. I hope, again, you are enjoying your day, spending time with your mom or enjoying her memory or spending time with your kids. And uh, remember to give God the glory in all things. Uh, I have a teaching on second Thursday nights called No More Genies. I want you to check that out. My next teaching is going to be next month. I already did it for this month last Thursday. So my next teaching on second Thursday night is going to be on June 14th. That's the second Thursday in June. So June 14th, I'm going to teach again on No More Genies, 7 p.m. on Thursday night on our Facebook Live and Periscope. Okay. And I'll be here next week on Facebook Live and Periscope at my regular time. Oh, okay. Uh, Marianne, please pray for my brother. He was in a car accident. He's in hospital now. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you on behalf of Marianne's brother, Lord, that was in a car accident. I ask you to be with him, oh God, to touch his body, touch his spirit, touch his mind, touch his spirit, Lord, to let him know that you're with him and to believe that by your stripes you're here, Lord. Wrap your arms of love around him. Help him to come all the way back to make a full recovery. 
and let his recovery be so miraculous that the EMTs and the doctors and the nurses are stunned by your glory and your power upon him. And we release that healing to Marianne's brother. We release the stripes of Jesus that heal every wound. And we release your healing power. And we call it done. We call him healed. And we want him to come all the way back and let his recovery be a testimony to those around him. And we thank you for it. And we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Uh, thank you, Marianne, for sharing that with me. And we know that God answers prayer, and we know that we have to release our faith by uh, confessing the word. So, all right. Thank you. God bless you. Again, I hope everybody's uh, having and will have a wonderful day. Uh, so June 14th, I'll be on second Thursday night, 7 o'clock with No More Genies. And I'll be on my regular time next Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time for a live prophetic word. All right. Thanks and God bless.